guys, welcome to another episode of Bushcraft North of 60. Today we're going to talk about loading your canoe one person. So if you're a solo paddler, if you're camping or trapping or something, how to get around loading and unloading your canoe by yourself, and in this case without roof racks. So if you want to see some tips and tricks, stay tuned. Well, if you can't tie knots, tie lots apparently, eh? If you look like this on your boat, We'll just see if we can uh, clean this up a little bit for you here, so yeah, let's we'll see what we can do about this setup. And these foam blocks, huh? Oh, don't mind the bugs, there's a few black flies out now, as well as the mosquitoes and the horse flies. But these blocks, I don't think that's supposed to happen, is it? Even tied down tight. Now one trick I'll show you with these, I've lashed a bit of rope around here just so that they'll stay tight on the canoe when you pick it up by yourself. Otherwise, they'll just drift back and forth and you won't get it on your car, right? But, if your canoe is like ours, your canoe, looking from the, the bow to the stern, should be pretty much flat, hopefully. Ours has got a little twist to it, so. We're always, unfortunately, gonna have one of these a little on the loose side, so we've got another way around that, too. I definitely recommend these if you can get them. If you can splurge, you can make your own too. But we'll see what to do in a pinch here as well, just in case. These little tie downs for your, your hood or your hatch. In Ford's infinite wisdom, in North America, they decided that we don't need tow hooks on our cars, which is kind of bad if you're a canoeist or you get your car stuck. So how about we strip this car down to uh, a fresh starting point and we'll take her from scratch for you guys. Well guys, if you are going to use these foam blocks, and they are handy for cars they work on, but unfortunately, if we come back and take a look at our car here, see how much lower it sits in the rear than the front? And the reason that is, is because, well for one thing, it's not perfectly centered on the car, but that's what we got to work with. But rather than having one here, and one back here, which would bring our canoe a little more level like this, and have uh, the load you know, the same sort of space between block to tip on each end. When we put these blocks on our canoe and put them uh, towards the front, the roof definitely moves around on you, so this isn't an ideal setup. It does work for you though. What I've done is lashed a little bit of cordage through here and every wrap I'll pull it tighter and tighter and that's with the boat on the ground with the, uh, the hull down and the deck facing up, so right side up like it's on the water. I pulled in tight enough so that when I pick the canoe up, these aren't drifting all over the place, but what you can do, if you are going to use these, let's get yourself a little sharpie here, and I would do this on the inside of your canoe where you can see it when your head's in it, but just put a couple of marks on it, and on your car, I mean you can always take this off with rubbing alcohol if you don't like it, or you could mark it inside your door jams, but what I had done here is just marked on the little drip rail, that way I would know when I'm picking my canoe up, for one thing, that these are centered on the canoe, and then when I've got it on my head, all i got to do is line the blocks up with the arrows on my car, roughly, and get it on the car, and then fine-tune it. But if you don't want to mark it outside where you can see it, you can either mark things inside here, your door jams, or even just a piece of tape. And it looks like I let a great big horse fly or three into the car. Get out. Yeah. At least they listen. Now, I've seen people do this to make a bridle, so they'll tie it as tight as they know how, or, yeah, remotely tight here, and then they'll just lash this in a figure eight pattern back and forth, and then, you know, if that's all you know, that will draw this tighter and tighter, but that sure is an awful lot of extra work, so let's get this all undone, and we'll get something else figured out for this here, too, when we get to it again. Here's a quick knot trip for you guys. I tied a Yosemite bowling, and I can't, well, I probably can now. Okay, it's going to make a fool out of me, but before I grabbed the camera, I couldn't get that out of there real easy. This little guy, everyone goes on, oh, I don't drink wine, what good is a corkscrew? On your Swiss Army knife, it makes a pretty handy impromptu marlin spike that you can get into these knots without actually damaging the rope. And look at that. And you can pull that right apart.
Don't underestimate that little tool. All right, guys, a couple things to keep in mind. Right now, the wind is coming from that side of my vehicle. As long as I've got it canted maybe a little bit on one shoulder, the wind's going to keep the, uh, the canoe weight on me instead of wanting to pull it away from me. And secondly, it's going to help me actually take the canoe off the car this way too. So we'll see that working for us in a second. And some of you guys might have a little bee stinger antenna like this thing has and a lot of, well, pretty much most new hatchbacks do I guess nowadays. This is the newest thing I've had in a while. But yeah, you want to keep in mind you don't want to bust that because they're probably not cheap and you're not going to have any tunes on the way home, so let's give this a whirl. What I'm going to try to do is just walk it a little bit at a time until it gets close enough that I can grab it on the edge, and then I'm going to try to get it up on top of me and then off the car. So an easy way to do that by yourself. You can move the top up and down and just kind of walk it out. get it close to the edge. And quick disclaimer, this is not going to be good for your paint. Uh, most things in life aren't going to be good for your paint, but I'll just warn you, if you're worried about your paint, get some roof racks. earlier I can't really keep my pads out towards the front of the roof when I'm driving is tied down but if you do have a lot of rock and roll going on you can move that ahead as long as you're not going to bang into here but we're going to get around this problem here pretty soon now I'm going to lift up on one side and I'm going to continue the walking process try not to bang your hood up don't pull your antenna off if you can help it Inside it. I can rotate it a little easier that way now. Get it where you would normally put it if you got a yoke or thwart. Hold it out away from your car and hang on to it good. You don't want it to fly around and hit your car, or drop down, and bust the mirror off. Get yourself centered, grab onto your gunnels, and away you go. I was saying guys this is actually pretty loose again I've got two marks here on my gunnel for when this is in my yard and normally when you buy these blocks they're not gonna look all nasty like that because that's been tied up for a bit but they're just gonna be your foam block when you put this on here there is nothing keeping that on there. So as soon as you go to pick your canoe up to put it on your car, these are just all over the place. So if you are going to use these, and keep in mind these are designed for putting a canoe on your car, so that's probably a better recommendation if they'll work. I get a little bit of cordage, probably about one, one and a half arm lengths long. I guess almost a span. I'm going to leave about a foot of it out. I'm going to go around. I want to draw these pieces here tight at the top, but I don't want to restrict the pad from riding on the gunnel. So you can use your knee to hold it in place. Hold your, uh, your shorter end to pull this tight. Go around another time. Pull it tight. And on your third trip here, if you know how to tie a square knot or a reef knot, then you'll know how to tie a surgeon's knot. So instead of just left over left, right over right, left 
over left twice in a row, pull it tight, and what that's going to do, you can let go of that now and that's not going to really go anywhere depending on how slippery your cordage is. And then right over right, right over right again, so it's basically just a doubled square knot. There. That's not going anywhere until you get your canoe up on the car. So if you're going to run with blocks, give that a try, see how that works for you. That's going to make it a lot easier than uh, putting them there and then you're going to go grab your canoe and flip it around and they're going to be all over the place and they won't work on your car properly and you'll get frustrated. Trust me, I got pretty frustrated. My little tip too is to take your sharpie and mark the inside of your canoe because once you've got that on your head right before you put it on your car you can just give them a little tap to move them where they need to be. So that's if you're going to go with the foam blocks. You guys get an invite to the pool party? Me neither. I'll cry when I go home though. But these are pool noodles. What are we going to do with pool noodles? Well, looking at my canoe I've got a mark here and a mark here where those blocks were and like I said earlier this one really should have been ran ahead a bit. What have we got here? I can't take credit for this. Uh, a friend of mine, Jonathan, hopefully he's watching this, but uh, yeah. I'm going to give this a shot, Jonathan. I haven't seen yours fly off your car yet. So, your pool canoe is going to have a hole down the middle like this. It's a lot like pipe insulation, except it's for kids to hopefully not drown on. Just take your knife and try and make this as straight a cut as you can, ideally. And just cut through here, you don't want to split that. Wow, so that's cut all the way through. That still grabs onto my hand pretty good. I wonder if that means it's going to grab onto our canoe well. Let's see. The only thing you're going to need to keep in mind is you may have to cut it for your thwarts. Let's see. So open that up and stick it around your gunnels. I've heard some people call them gun whales. That's definitely how they're spelled. But I'm from the East Coast. And I've only ever heard them called gunnels. So. Now see, that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to get the other side fired up, and I'm going to see if I can hoist this thing on my head. Alright, so, some of you guys might even have a problem with this part before you even get to the car. I've seen a lot of couples where they're pretty good, and couples, not just guy-girl couples, but whoever's going paddling to in the boat. Team, I should say. So when a pair of people grab the boat, usually... actually got more control that way. I've only got one person, so we'll see if we can do this. And I've seen a lot of people struggle with this. Now keep in mind, I've never done this with the noodles yet, so this is new to me too. But when you pick up a canoe, a lot of it's about momentum and stuff too, so. I mean, I wouldn't really put a nice canoe on gravel like this, but this old dam buster is all right. Pick it up, get your knee on your good leg, just underneath the uh, underneath the hull here, then you're gonna lever it, grab it up here with your opposite arm. I'm gonna get one handle on here and one hand down underneath. You can use your knee just to give it that little shove. So you probably couldn't see that in the camera, but I just kind of gave her a little boink, and you can kind of, as the canoe is rising up, you can kind of fall underneath it catch it halfway and stand up with it. Here's going to be the fun part. I'm going to grab onto my thwart here, hopefully you can see my hand, because I'm going to keep the car side gunnel up, the other side down. And keep in mind the wind's still going this way, so it's going to help me too. And I'm going to try not to scratch my car all up. Can't guarantee it though. Alright. So at this point, has the weight. I don't know if I would trust holding on to just the wheels unless you got pretty good grippers on you. Same thing. I'm going to rock it up, back and forth. There's a little bit more weight 
down the front. Wait until we get to that antenna. If you got one of these fancy cars with a little bee stinger antenna. Break. Don't wreck your car for nothing. I've just got the weight on my shoulder here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tip the, the bow of the canoe, which happens to be at the front of the car, down quite a bit to get that over the antenna and then rotate it around. That's the plan. If you need to, grab a thwart up here and pull down using your back as a fulcrum point. Once you can't get your head out of there, just go back a little bit further from not getting your head out and get your head out. And then just do the same thing until you can't get your hands out. And when you can't get your hands out, you've got your canoe on your car. I don't admire it too much in the wind like this because it could take off on you. So right now that's crooked as about a $3 bill. So what I'm gonna do, now this is a lot easier with the blocks. With the blocks on, trying to move it from the bow or wiggle it across, even with the rope on it, they just wanna flip around on you. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna carefully look to make sure I don't have any gunnels. In my case, it's aluminum, but whatever material yours is made of, I'm gonna make sure that that's not gonna come in contact with the car. I'm gonna pull down on the bow and move the stern back. I'm gonna lift up on the bow and move the bow over. I'm gonna push down on the bow and move the stern over to the side lift up on the bow and pull the bow over to the side until it's centered on the car. If you don't like fingernails on chalkboards, you won't like this. pretty good I'm happy with that now we get to tie this beast down well a smart person would have showed you this before they tied the canoe on and a proud person would have probably took the canoe off I can't be bothered these are your tie downs and this one's a little squishy it must be warm in there what these basically do they'll go in somewhere where they should fit which in my case is not very many places and when you close the hood or the hatch if you use it on the back That'll jam up and allow you to have a tie down point. You can buy ones that have a grommet in them and that don't have this handle. You would take out a fender bolt, put this over the hole and put your fender bolt back through. And when you have your canoe and you fold them out and you tie your canoe down or your kayak, when you don't, you would just fold that back underneath the hood and close your hood. And that's what we had on our Subaru a few years ago. Now, I've tried mine up here and what I found is even with them there, when I start pulling the ropes tight, it's going to come across to the front of the car anyway. So I found a spot where that likes to stay put. I always test it first. Give it a good pull. And that's not going anywhere. Now, let's say you didn't have those for some reason. You went and bought a canoe and you're like, oh, smart me. I forgot to have something like this when I bought it. Let's see what else we can do. If there's two things you should always have in your car, that's rope. Uh, this probably isn't what I would use, but I don't think it would be terrible either at the same time. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a little bite in it here. Probably about as long as this red piece is on that. And I'm gonna put my hand right about where the bite is, give myself some slack here. And I'm going to loop this around a fair bit of times. I'm going to keep this, I think this is the standing end and this is the running end. 
and you guys just heard my car turning off there. And I'm going to wrap it really tight this way. And by really tight, I mean stinking tight. I'm going to come across and do another wrap on it. What I'm doing is building up a whole bunch of mass here. Not wine and crackers mass. Almost like a monkey's fist. I'm going to put this piece through the bite. I'm going to go around one of these parts of the bite, around the running end. I'm going to do the same thing through the bite, except this time going on the other side. I'm going to run under this piece, keep that all pretty tight. And then I'm just going to put a couple half hitches in it here. So what you're left with, and if you're smart and you don't cut your rope, because you should never cut rope unless you have to, you can run that side across to your other side of your car. Make sure this isn't going to get caught up in like your cooling fan or your belts or anything like that. It'd be a good idea to tie it down in front of your rad and maybe even tie it tight to the rad support. But now, let's see how that works. So I'm going to take this and then lay it next to where my other guy is there just for comparison's sake. There we go. I think a Ford would be used to the hood opening and closing a lot. And that is not going anywhere. There's your tie down point. Just so you guys can see, because that was out of frame a bit I noticed. And you could even run this outside your hood too. I guess that way you can see what it's doing. There's the factory uh, bought option pre-made. There's the bushcraft option. So if your car doesn't have a hitch or a tie down loop or something on the back, or uh, yeah, even a sedan, so this will work for a hatchback or a sedan, but your homemade canoe loop uh, strap holder here, you can maybe even find a spot where it's not going to creep up on you. Let's see what it does here. Test it real good before you trust it. Yeah, that, that's going to tear my hatch off before it comes out. But you can stick it down here on a flat surface along the bottom. Say this was the bottom edge and my bumper was here and this is the hatch. You're going to find that if you've got these on an angle, you've got force going this way. If they, uh, for any reason, can move this way, as those ropes draw tighter, they're effectively going to be too long and that's going to slack off your canoe and you're going to have an airship for a second there. So keep that in mind that's why where I've got this notch here so it's going to be wanting to pull this way which is going to draw to this tightest section here if it's already in that it can't go any further and hopefully you'll have rope that doesn't have too much stretch but if it does one of the knots we're going to use you can take the stretch out of that so you're going to need a couple of hanks of rope one for each end at least and our car we've got a hitch here which also has these little uh, loops on it for your safety chains. So all I'm going to do, this should be a uh, quick release hank. Yeah. I find braided rope sometimes works a little better for this than, uh, than a twisted rope. But it could depend on the material too. Now, I'm going to tie a bowline knot. I'm going to go through these safety loops because if you just went around behind them or anything like that, they could, uh, if your canoe does move and slack your line here, I'll show you. Let's say you tie the loop there, which I've done only when I've got the trailer hitch in and the trailer on it, because then my safety chains and my uh, pin are here. It might stay, but if you hit a few bumps and this wiggles off, then your canoe is coming down the front of your car or down off the side of it. So always make sure whatever you're tying on to isn't dependent on just the strain of the rope to keep it in place. So we'll tie a bowline knot on here. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to start off with a bowline knot. 
I'm gonna just move this rope around so I'm tying it facing you guys. There's a few ways you can tie a bowline knot, and there's a couple of different types of bowlines as well. So the way most people were taught is to make a, uh, a loop over your running end, or your standing end. I'll get it straight one of these days. The part that's uh, attached to the rest of your cord. So just take it, twist it back down towards yourself, and the little rhyme is, oh, the, the rabbit comes out of his hole, goes around the tree, and back down in his hole. Just pinch these together tight, and you've got a bowline. That's a little longer than I'm gonna make it, but that was just so I could hold it out for the camera. And a bowline shouldn't slip, but, well, here I'll show you after we tie it a different way. I'm gonna pull a little bit more through here. The other way to tie it is to start with the Marlin spike hitch. And this is the way I learned it from uh, Corporal Kelly at Corporal's Corner. Check his YouTube channel out. Basically, if you twist this back on itself like we were before, but then reach down through it and pull a bite through like this. Then you just need to run this end through that bite, pull it back on itself, pull it tight, and you've got a bowling knot. And you get bit by mosquitoes. So anyways, that's kind of cool. This is what they call a cowboy or left hand bowling knot. And the reason it went like that, I'll show you that too. So we made our loop, and we brought it back and made our marlin spike hitch. If I go through the loop in the middle here and come around facing me, it's going to be a cowboy or left hand style. If we go around this way, it's going to be what they call your traditional or classic bowling so that this is inside the loop. And honestly, I don't think it makes any difference. But the other thing with a, uh, with a bowling loop or bowling knot is we want to make sure it doesn't slip. So give yourself enough here that you can tie on some uh, extra rope here in a second, and you'll see. But we'll make that bowling knot. I'm going to do mine, eh, we'll do it cowboy style. Pinch it together right here, pull it tight, and you get your bowling. Now, theoretically, this could push through and loosen off. I've never had one come loose, but what you can do is put a double uh, overhand knot on it here. So we're going to go around and around again. And then I'm going to come up through here. It should put a little X, almost like an overhand knot on there, just to use that as a stopper knot. And you could even bring this up a little closer if you wanted. So you don't need all this extra rope. But if you put that knot, right close to this it theoretically should have less to uh, I'll make sure we get that all nice and tight it shouldn't even slip really at that point but if it does that'll keep that from coming through the bowling so that's one way you can make that uh, a little more secured so now I'm going to show you guys another knot that will actually tighten this up to your canoe and uh, draw Quite a bit of strain on the rope. You probably just saw those ducks flare over there, did you? That's cool. All right, let's do it. All right, so your canoe is centered. You've got your bowline knot that's locked up and secure down at the lower point of your vehicle. We're going to use the back for this instance. Now you're going to want to tighten this up. And you're probably going to figure out what works for your setup, do it a couple of times, and then cut your rope or I'll show you how to take care of extra rope here in a bit too. But take this end of it. So you should have a tie down loop somewhere on your canoe. If you don't, look around on YouTube. Some people have got videos how to drill through your canoe and glue in a piece of uh, pipe that you can use. And if it's low enough, not just for tying it down, but you could also use that for uh, lining your canoe through rapids and things. But that's not this video. What we're gonna do now is tie a trucker's hitch. So I'm going to leave a little bit of slack in this rope. Enough that I can make a pretty good sized bite here. And I'm going to try to put my bite closer towards the vehicle. But I'll show you how to do it up here. So I'm going to twist this about three times. It's just going to make it easier to untie it later. And I'm going to go towards... So you got an anchor point and then your second anchor point, which is what you're going to loop around or on or whatever afterwards. But uh, whichever your extra rope is coming from, 
that's point number two. So you want to take this twisted bite that you made and lay it towards point number two, pull this through, and then we're going to use this to tighten it up. I'll move the camera a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Now this is the same knot I use on my ridge line too, usually. So I've got my bite. One, two, three twists. I'm going to pull another bite through that. I'm going to tighten it up as much as I can by hand. I'm going to fair that up just so it doesn't get a whole bunch of extra in it when I go to tighten the canoe up. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this rope through. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can actually just pass a bite through it. So pass a bite, give yourself, I don't know, maybe two feet. Maybe even a little less, because we're going to be getting some extra when we bring this up tight. Then, pull this. You might need to, depending what your canoe has for a loop on the end, you might need to work that through if it pinches tight like mine does. Now that's fairly tight, not super tight. Let me move you guys up here again. Let me show you again here on the camera. So you've got... Your, a loose rope, put your bite in it, pull it pretty tight. I can't make it zinging tight yet because the front of the canoe is still loose. But just to get yourself started, this piece that you ran through, the actual part that's taking the load, you're going to want to pinch that together, then pass your bite around. So you'll have it like this. You're basically just making a half hitch. But you want that half hitch to be on top of where you're pinching your hand because this is going to replace your fingers and keeping that tight. I'm only putting one half hitch on it right now because now we need to tie the front end up. And that's where you'll probably see this knot a little easier. So let's go check that out. So the front of our canoe, we've actually got two symmetrical tie down points. So what I'm hoping is to have an equal length of cord on each side. Now, that bridle that I showed you that some people will tie up on their canoes at the beginning, the reason people do that, when you pull this tight, even if that's pretty tight and it isn't a triangle, your canoe can still move side to side through that rope and it can bugger off on you and you don't want that. So what we're going to do, we got another hank of rope here, which I should have set up as a quick release. Yep. So just splay that out. And we're going to just Pull it through one hand while we hold on to the end until we get to the other. And you've got your two ends. Put them in one hand, keep them side by side, and just pull it through so you get to bite at the end. That's the center line of your rope. And what we're going to do with this is attach it to the bow of the canoe. And there's a couple ways you can do this. So I'll bring the canoe over, or bring the canoe over. I'll bring the camera over to the canoe and show you how to do that. So this is a little trick I like to do on my canoe, especially when I was using ratchet straps on our Jeep, but uh, with a carabiner. Let's see if I can hook this on the right way. So the neat thing, if you make your lark heads knot, lark's head knot, or if you just had this piece on as well. Actually, you know what? Let's assume you don't have this. Let's clip that on my belt loop. So this is all you have on your canoe, your low budget paddler. Pass that bite through. And pull all this up. Draw that tight. That in and of itself is basically a lark's head knot. And that should keep things centered quite well. But if you like having things done on a quick release sort of fashion like I do, I'm going to pull this out. Give myself lots of rope burn here, apparently. Keep your bite. Because the cool thing I can do with this now is, for one, put it on properly. That might stay. So there's two ways I could do this. I could just put this on kind of like a marlin spike hitch I guess except it's in a bite and now that should stay tight it shouldn't go anywhere 
or you could even actually just put a Marlin spike hitch in it. So you're gonna make a, a loop, fold it over itself, boom. And then that can go right inside there. Pull all this tight. And that shouldn't go no place. Let's get some more knots going here. So now you've got these two ends. Take one and just get it out of your way. Put it on the other side of the car. And this guy, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna run it through here. I'm gonna pull it not super tight. I don't want the uh, the carabiner to get pulled out of whack, but what I'm gonna tie here, and you guys may or may not know, this is just a taut line hitch. So I'm gonna put it over it once, over it twice, going from the front to the back. And then I'm gonna come across this way and have it so that I'm gonna pull it out towards me this time. And if that's not real clear, uh, just look up taut line hitch on YouTube. I might do a video on knots someday too. But now this can actually be brought up to draw that kind of tight. I wouldn't use that to keep a canoe tight, but it's gonna come in handy because now we can tie the other side with their uh, trucker's hitch. So now this is a good way to actually see that trucker's hitch. I'm going to run it through this loop. There's probably a bunch of different ways to tie the trucker's hitch I've seen too. I'm going to get as close to the top up here as I can. Because that's going to give me more rope to work with. So once again, I'm going to make a loop. Twist it two or three times. Pull a bite through it. And then I'm going to bring my rope back up this way. Now here's the beauty of that trucker's hitch. Let's see if this is in the frame here. Oh yeah. So I'm going to pull on this and it's going to work almost like a pulley system to draw this down tight. So watch what happens. See that? You can get an awful lot of force on something like this. Enough that you should actually be careful. So to keep that from slipping, I've got it fairly tight. This beaner is almost level. You might even be able to get away with the taut line hitch, but I'm not going to recommend it. Just because I know what's going to happen if you use it. So I'm going to pinch this tight. And then I'm going to go around the whole section of rope here. I'm gonna tie a half hitch in it. Keep pinching that with your fingers tight. There's a way I know to loop this through. So instead of going through that bite here once, if you go through it twice, when you pull on it, let go, it'll stay tight. I don't find it works good with this particular cordage, so I'm not gonna demonstrate something that doesn't work. But that half hitch is gonna keep friction here and keep it from pulling extra cord through. And I'm gonna tie another one on it. You could even do this with bites now, but I'm gonna do it with the cordage itself. One more. Here we go. I'm gonna go do the other side, and then we'll go back to the back of the canoe. One, two, three. Pull the bite. Get their cord in. Keep an eye on your uh, your blocks or your phone, whatever you're using, to make sure you're not doing anything crazy to your car. Our half hitch, pull it down over the knot where it's bound up. This is where it's nice to have your excess cut off once you know. You're not pulling as much cordage through. It's 
like a big friendship bracelet. Not that I know anything about that stuff. All right, let's go to the back. So all the time the back has basically just been held tight enough that I can tighten the front end up. What I don't like about not having a beaner on the back, and I should just throw one on it, is this loop here gets tightened up and cinches in and it won't draw tight with the trucker's hitch as well. So what I'm gonna do is reverse what I've done here. I'm gonna put the bowline up here and then use the trucker's hitch down at the bottom and then I can actually have it pass through the safety loop and almost have it like a bearing block except it doesn't actually turn like one, but it's pretty low friction. Don't ever get in the habit of wrapping rope around yourself, around your arm, or around your fingers. Because you know what's going to happen that one time that rope is going to be a danger. You're going to be on a boat or something, or in a vehicle, or farm equipment, and you're going to have that rope tied around, or a horse or something even, and when that pulls, that's how you can get amputated or cut right down to the bone and sever things. So don't ever loop rope around yourself like that. Just hold on to it if you need to. You can fold it up like that and give yourself something to pull, or you can always tie a marlin spike hitch and put a stick or something in there, but that's another video. But don't wrap rope around yourself. So we're going to make our bite. We're going to make three loops in it, or three twists, sorry. Pull the bite through it. We're going to run this end up from the bottom of the car again to it. Here's our block and tackle made out of cordage. I'm going to stand on this side so you guys can see. Make sure that you're not squashing the roof of your car down too bad and that everything's centered. Give her stink. <clears throat> Don't tie this in the same spot every time either because what'll happen, you'll wear through your cord. So I would put a little extra through at that end and move it around next time. You'll, you'll see if you start to get frayed points before they get bad enough to replace your rope, start moving it. Always inspect your rope. So just pinching these together is going to keep that tight. Oh yeah. One more for good luck. <clears throat> yeah, if you can move your whole car, you're doing good. So I'm just going to throw this around here so I can bring that through and make a half hitch. I want that to be as close up to that pinch point as I can get it because that's going to be all that's holding it. All right. I'm going to put a few more in. Like I say, you could do this with a bite. And ideally, once you've got your rope lengths figured out, Ideally, then you could even just cut that off and melt the end and know this one's always going to be for the back of your car. Now let's say you did make your own homemade tie downs for the front of your car here or the back of the rope and it did have stretch. Once you get everything snugged up and if you still have a little bit of uh, play there, a little bit of movement, just loosen off one of your trucker hitches. Keep a hold of the rope, pinch it together here, just so you don't have to pull as much through. Once that starts to come, it's going to be pretty easy. There we go. Pull this out. I'm keeping my thumb on this bite here so it doesn't move. Just pull it tight, reset it. Grab on your canoe and give her a feel. Oh yeah. So while I'm holding on to that, I might even just tie a bite into a half hitch. Just make sure you keep tension on it. Maybe use your thumb just to roll that down so your knot doesn't slide. Oh yeah, and I'm just going to do the same to the other side to keep things equal. What about all this? If you're like me, you hate cutting rope. Mostly because I'm lazy, but it's good to have full length of rope. 
if you needed to put the rope back together and use it for something close to its maximum strength, if it's a solid piece of rope, a good run, you've got 100% of your working load still. If it's got a knot, you can lower the strength by like 20 to 60% depending on the knot. What I'm gonna do, my seat is right about here. I'm gonna go up to where the seat is and just wrap it around. You can do the same thing with a thwart and then tie it off. So it'd be like a round turn and two half hitches, except however many turns you need to take up your slack. This has the added benefit of keeping some tension on your half hitches in the front too. And if you had a whole lot of rope, you could even put it in a bite and double it up to come around through here. And a couple of half hitches. One, two, we're done. And there's your canoe tied down. That looks a lot cleaner than when we drove up here, doesn't it? So a quick overview of what we have, just if you need to go back and look in the video or find some more detailed videos online for the knots, you can have a lark heads knot here, lark's head, sorry, or in my case I've got a marlin spike hitch. We have trucker's hitch or wagoner's hitch, wagoner's knot, lorry knot, there's all kinds of names for that, or extra, depending on what your boats have, like you could run that up underneath if you didn't have a big deck here, but I've just got the extra run up to my uh, seats or thwarts with some turns and half hitches. In the back here, we've got another bowling knot that's been uh, doubled up with a safety knot in it, a stopper knot. Running down through the safety chain loop into another trucker's hitch. And normally that would make a nice little sound, but this is almost like a, a whisker on a bowstring making it quiet. Then the extra is just wrapped up around the seat with another couple of half hitches. Our antenna is still in one piece, thankfully. You're going to want to grab on your boat, rock your whole car, and make sure it can't move side to side, fore and aft. Now the purists will say, and they're right, you should have a couple lines up around here. Now if you don't have roof racks, what you can do, and if you don't care about your car, because you're going to be chewing these up a little bit, your weather stripping, but if you run rope through the inside of your car with the doors open, not the windows. I've seen it done with the, the windows open, and then they're like, how do we get in the car? Don't do that. Run your ropes up through the top, and you can do it outside the car, but it's kind of easier, and then you can check it inside. Do another trucker's hitch inside there. Like if you've got an old beater, I wouldn't do it on this per se. And if you've got roof racks, definitely do that because there's no excuse not to. You can loop right on the roof rack and go across. But I've seen a lot of people here in Yellowknife that only put the straps across the deck. And you think about it, your canoe only flares a little bit midship and then tapers again. If there's any slack at all and that canoe slides out through those loops, it's gone. Whereas your, your bow line and your stern line, here's another quick little tip. You want pretty close to the same angle this way. You want the mirror image of it this way because what that's gonna do is keep the canoe centered. If you've got it on say, uh, well, let me just put the tripod back together here and demonstrate. If you've got it on a hatchback like this, it's nice to have those tie down points on the hood further back because if it was a sedan and you had these out to the bumper, well, you can always go out to the bumper on the back of the car because you got a trunk sticking out with a hatch. If you had both these lines like this, they're both pulling this way. It's going to want to straighten out and put your canoe this way and slack all your lines out. But moving that anchor point in, all of a sudden they're both pulling in pretty close opposition to each other. That's key. If you've got a pickup truck, you can even do this on the roof, but don't tie it out to the back of your box. Maybe tie it to the uh, the tie downs if they still put those in trucks nowadays. You can't even call them trucks. Put it down to the tie downs in the front corner or maybe over the wheel wells. You have to jig it around a little bit, but you'll get her. So check everything like four times before you go on a public roadway with it. Check all your knots, check all your lashings, uh, check all your tie down points, your loops underneath your hat and your hood because if they can move, that's gonna loosen off and she's gonna disappear on you. Just for giggles, if I was going long distance or anything, 
I would tie these down underneath the doors at least one but keep in mind if you tie it inside if you go in the rain all that water is going to saturate your lines and most likely run inside your car and drip inside what you can do say your rope comes down to here well our door is here so in this case the rope would come here tie a little chunk of cordage about that big and what that'll hopefully do if you tie it tight enough on the line here any water coming down through that it's just like a ridge line on a hammock it'll uh, wick through that line and drip off and just splash out the outside of the car instead of coming inside but this is just what I do I hope it helps you but by no means is this advice or anything uh, that I'm taking responsibility for it's solely up to you to secure your own loads but I hope that makes things easier for people out there that just want to do it by themselves and they don't have a paddling partner if you guys have any questions or comments please leave those in the bottom uh, there's probably about a hundred different ways you can do this so there's probably some ways better than others this is just the way I happen to do it and have success with it other than the pool noodles that was the first time for that and I'm pretty pleased with it so uh, once again I want to thank my buddy Jonathan if you're watching this we need to get out for a paddle sometime soon buddy yeah that's it for another episode so until next time take care and we'll see you again from the northwest territories in northern canada make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell so you know more stuff coming down the pipe because there's supposed to be a camping trip coming soon so we'll see you then take care guys if you guys suffered through this whole video i'm going to give you a little bonus here and it's probably going to be a standalone video as well so if you're watching this as a standalone video be sure to check out the canoe tying down video i haven't thought of the title for it yet but it's gonna be something along the lines of one person canoeing, tying canoe down. But anyways, or a knife. I did have a pair of pants that had the button on the side. And I still have them, I don't wear them as much that I could uh, stick this right into it. A lot of times I'll ride my uh, knife here, but with my uh, Fell Raven pants, the snaps make a lot of noise, which I don't like, especially if I'm hunting. So what I've been doing now, this might work on your pants too. I've got a pretty thick belt, so I've got to pull the, the loop out here. But I'm going to take the tip of the knife, put it through that belt loop, and then this loop here, I'm going to put the belt hanger for the knife sheath through that, which is easier said than done. There we go. Stick your belt back through. It should be nice and tight now. And voila, you got yourself a cross draw set up. You can still wear a life jacket. You can still have what other junk on your pants that you normally carry. You can crouch and bend over. It's not in the way. If you should really be on a diet and you're not, it's still going to roll over that nice. So yeah, that's my little bonus to you guys. Take care.